strangely quiet in here just <laughs> before worship. So welcome everyone and uh, wonderful to be here on this foggy day outside, the fourth Sunday of the season, no, the third Sunday of the season of Lent, fourth Sunday, third Sunday of the season of Lent, March the 3rd, so lots of threes, three, 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 right? March the 3rd, Lent 3. Um, before we start our worship, we take a moment to think about the land that we're located on, whether it's here in the church or elsewhere in Dorchester or London or Alberta or Strathroy. Well, it's true that we are the current stewards of this land. It was not always so. Before the London Township Purchase of 1796, also known as Treaty 6, uh, this land was uh, stewarded by the Anishinaabewaki, Anishinaabewaki, Mississauga, and Attawandaronk peoples. And before there were people, the land was. As indigenous peoples and Christians alike, we acknowledge that the land which sustains us all, the land on which we live and move and have our being, it belongs to God, our creator. Um, we normally do announcements a little later, but there are two that I want to get to right away. And that is just a reminder that today, following an abbreviated worship, we will be holding our annual congregational meeting. And that will happen here in the sanctuary. And those on Zoom, will, we will keep the Zoom link open so that they can participate as well. And they will be able to unmute themselves and contribute to the meeting. The other side of it is, in order for them to hear us, if anyone wishes to say anything, um, Alan Bush has said that he would carry a mic around so that if you use the mic, people online can hear you as well. Um, and then after the meeting, there is a little exercise arranged for downstairs. Uh, the other thing to note is that the lovely yellow roses here on the table this morning are in memory of David Woods.
and we're going to extinguish another candle this morning. We live in a world of many divisions, class, gender, religion, race, and politics. It is not easy to risk our vulnerabilities in order to get to know someone who seems different. Though God welcomes all peoples, invites the gifts of all nations, and celebrates the uniqueness of each culture, we live in poverty when we re remain separated. Our lines of separation diminish our togetherness and diminish our humanity. Like the Samaritan woman at the well, we are thirsty for a drink that will quench our deepest yearnings. We long to drink deeply at the well. Yet we remain thirsty and we live in a life of quiet desperation. And we sing. pray. O Christ, you said, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. Therefore, O God, we pray that you will quench our deepest thirst for acceptance, love, and peace. Fill our cup with your spirit till it overflows. May we drink to our heart's content at your well. May we live a life of blessing by giving to others what you give to us with generosity, courage, and hope. Amen. And we take a moment of silence to listen for that still, small voice that we know is God. I'd invite you to join me in the call to worship. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from the work of creation. And God said, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. And so it is that on this day we gather together in this place to rest in God's presence to be restored by God's love, to be renewed by God's grace, to listen again to God's words, to love and be loved. This is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And our opening hymn is from More Voices, number one, Let Us Build a House.
And I would invite you to join in our opening prayer. Your breath, O God, whispers words of wisdom to us, inviting us to live in community with you and with all around us. You yearn for us to know the deep fulfillment of a close relationship with you. You even speak to us of how to achieve such closeness with you and with others. Yet even those simple instructions, O oh God, we manage to get it wrong. We misuse your name on an almost daily basis and dishonor our friends and neighbors by talking behind their backs. We hunger for what others have and think we can put you in a box and store you away on a shelf. We find little enough time for our families, for ourselves, for you, much less setting aside an entire day for that rest you call Sabbath. We think we are so wise with the choices we make, only to end up with all that keeps us from you. Your word has come to fill our speech with grace, with hope, with peace. As we journey to Jerusalem, may we invite others to join us as we seek to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> and I would invite you to rise as you're able as, as we recite the new creed of the United Church of Canada as we talk about the faith that we have and that we live. <clears throat> we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. The scripture this morning is taken from the book of Exodus. Listen for the word of God. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to, though, to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord, your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. 
You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female slave, ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. May God add a blessing on the reading of this holy word and forever write its meaning in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. Okay. We pray, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. About a week and a half ago, I took a mandatory refresher course dealing with the topic of boundaries. Amongst other things, we talked about the sexual misconduct and response policy and procedures and the workplace discrimination, harassment and violence prevention and response policy for the United Church of Canada. So as I read the Old Testament lesson for today, it made me think of the various types and purposes of boundaries. Boundaries have been with us for a long time. In the 21st century, before the current era, the Sumerians built the Amorite Wall to protect themselves from attack by the Amorites. It was about 100 miles long, and it ran between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. Anyone ever heard of the Great Wall of China? Seen pictures of it? Did you know that parts of it date back as far as the seventh century before the current era? It didn't really get going until about the third century before the current era, and its construction continued on, and the parts that we're most familiar with happened during the Ming Dynasty from the 14th to the 17th centuries of the current era. It runs thousands of miles, and it was started to protect against attack by the Mongols. And it's one of the very, uh, probably the only, man-made structure visible from space. The A triangular portion of the peninsula. You see, Athens isn't a port. It's four miles inland. And so, if an enemy wanted to topple Athens, all they had to do was surround it, starve the people out. But by building walls that walled off the peninsula, it meant that supplies could come in from the two major ports on the coast. Hadrian's Wall was built in, starting in the second century, protected Roman Britain from the Picts and, and other tribes in Scotland and North England. The Great Wall of Gorgon from the fifth century protected the Persians from the Hephthalite Huns. And the walls of Constantinople, also the 5th century of the current era, protected the people of Constantinople from the Arabs and the Huns. As much as they claim that the Berlin Wall, which was started in 1961 and continued uh, expanding and reinforcing up until 1989, was purportedly built to protect against fascist infiltration. But really, it was built to keep the East Germans, East Berliners, in. There's also walls separating Gaza and Israel. Parts of the border between the U.S. and Mexico have walls and fences constructed along. 
There's even discussions going on about protecting Fortress America from those nasty Canadians to the north. And walls are not the only kind of boundaries. Rules are a kind of boundary. Some people don't like rules. They, th they think that they have rights that are absolute, that carry no um, accountability or consequences, that they are without limit, and that they're God-given. They just don't like being told what they can or cannot do. And they think that the rules shouldn't apply to them. Take the protests against the mask mandates during the pandemic as an example. Rules, and more specifically laws, are there to define what is acceptable behavior in society. They exist for the benefit of society as a whole. Rules and laws may be seen by some to be a limit, but they act to free people to live in safety and in peace. And that is what the Ten Commandments are all about. The intent of them isn't to prevent people from doing certain things. The intent is to enable people to live in peace and security. The intent is to allow relationships to flourish and people to thrive in community. So we just read the Ten Commandments, so um, <clears throat> I'd like to know how many of you can recite all ten of them in order right now. Let me help. Okay. God's number one. That's well, not in order yet. There's no number two. No making idols. You see that? There's a W that appears here. God's word and God's name are sacred. Don't use God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath. You see the thumb is resting here. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break your wedding vows or commit adult by committing adultery, right? Do not steal or you wind up here behind bars. Do not spread misinformation or act as a false witness. You see, this one's whispering behind the backs of everybody, right? And keep your hands off your neighbor's stuff. Do not covet what is not your own. And do you notice the first five of them are positive? They're things to be practiced. And the last five are negative. Do not do these five things. There's even a sense in which Lent itself is a boundary. It's a boundary between the trials of life in the world as we have constructed it and life in Christ, who lived the kingdom of God. May we all successfully cross that boundary. Amen.
We're going to sing, what does the Lord require of you as a round? And let's see. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we'll start off with part one. And then we'll go to part two. And, and we've got all these strong singers behind me, so they can be part three. And we'll sing, how many times are we going to sing it? How many times are we going to sing it? How many times are you going to play it? Well, as long as you're singing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do it three, three times? Okay. Can we all sing each part once and then do it again? Yes, yeah. We can do that. We'll, we'll all sing the whole thing through once and then we'll break it up, okay? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? Justice, kindness, come with your God. To seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? Justice, kindness, walk humbly with your God. Require of you. What does the Lord require of you? Justice, for God. Walk humbly with your God. To seek justice and love kindness. Thank you. <clears throat> we had fun, right? <laughs> In the gospel reading for today, Jesus gets angry and he makes a whip of cords and he drives the cattle and the sheep from the temple court and he overturns the tables and pours out the coins of the money changers. The covenant between God and humankind is not a business opportunity to be exploited. Rather, it's a torrid love affair where each party is totally consumed in their passion for the other. The covenant for us is about our zeal for the kingdom of God and the humble recognition of God's extravagant grace in our lives. May God make us foolish enough in our giving that we might become wise enough to know that our offerings will bless those who are weak and in need. Our tithes and offerings will be received. <laughs> Praise God throughout these forty days. Praise Christ our Lord who pray. Holy One, we have learned that when we give away, we are enriched, and when we let go, we receive. Bless what we give away and let go of this day for the sake of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries or other celebrations 
or any prayer requests. Okay. <clears throat> there are a few announcements. Um, the worship committee is meeting Wednesday, March the 13th at 4.30 in the afternoon. This one's important. The daylight savings time starts next Sunday morning at 2 o'clock. So next Saturday night before you go to bed, make sure you put your clocks ahead an hour. Um, next week, I'm on continuing education. And um, so for pastoral emergencies, please contact Carlene Kimber. And the number is on the bulletin. And there's just a reminder that Belmont is continuing on with their Wednesday evening uh, Lenten worship. So there's uh, a light supper at 6 o'clock, and at 6.45 there's a brief worship service throughout Wednesdays on Lent. Um, and then the other things that are in the, in the bulletin are announcements about what's coming up during Holy Week. And uh, there's lots there to look at. So I invite you to... <clears throat> Look at the bulletin when you have an opportunity. Seeing no requests for prayers or anything else, let's continue on and pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for you, for you are good. Your love endures forever. When lost and uncertain about where to go, when no choice seems to be the best choice, when the road ahead looks for all the world to be a dead end, when backs are against the wall with nowhere to turn and fear is all around, when we cry to you in our trouble, you whisper a word about faithfulness and cross-bearing. Lighten the darkness in which we walk. Illumine the path on which we stumble. Strengthen our resolve. Quicken our step. Give us confidence, for we know your steadfast love endures forever. God, help your church to be true to its promises to care for the very young and the very old, the homeless, the prisoner, the poor, the lonely, and the bereaved. Help us to make good your promises to all people. And this week we pray especially for St. Andrew's United Church in Comber as they anticipate the arrival of their new spiritual leader, the Reverend Kim Gilliland, this June. We pray for all of those in the Dorchester area who don't currently have a spiritual home and are looking for one, that they might deepen their relationship with you, O oh God, and with community. We pray that we at Dorchester United Church may have the opportunity to engage with the work you are already doing in their lives. We pray for all people of every tribe, race, and religion, those who are faced daily with terrorism and war, those who are struggling with the effects of natural disaster, those who live in fear of their leaders, those who live without hope for the future. Especially this week, we pray for the people of Ireland, the United Kingdom, England, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Give hope to any who grieve this day, especially the friends and family of Doug Bush, Lorna Freeman, Richard Fulton, and David Woods. Give strength to any who are ill today. We think of Carol Reed and others from this congregation, Linda Cheney, who are home ill with some virus or bacterial infection and their friends and their families and their caregivers and those known only in the silence of our own hearts.
All this we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our hymn is number 504 in Voices United. How clear is our vocation, Lord. be seated <clears throat> and and this is the part where we move into our annual meeting and we'll stay online for those who are online and um, they'll be able to unmute themselves and talk to us and we'll be able to hear them and Alan Bush is going to make sure that there's a microphone available to those who need and we'll just set up a table here for our secretary and our chair.